Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We've made it to the Martini! We have two more episodes of Julius Caesar to go and then we get into King John, so that'll be fun. Today we get to hear from Marcus Brutus in Act 5, Scene 3, just to finish off this scene before we get into the last couple um, for tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll have like a little wrap-up of Julius Caesar as well. Um, and then after, after that, on Thursday, we get into King John, so that'll be an adventure for all of us. So today, um, in Act 5, we have Mark Antony and Octavius Caesar fighting Cassius and Brutus on opposite sides of things, and things looked like they were going badly for the Brutus and Cassius side, um, specifically for the Cassius side. He thought that his camp had been invaded, so he killed himself, or he had his servant kill him for him because he couldn't kill himself, and then that servant Pindarus went running away. Titinius and Masala come back and they find that Cassius has killed himself, so Titinius sends Masala off to get Brutus and then kills himself on top of, well, maybe not on top of, but very near Cassius because he uses Cassius' sword to do it. And then Masala and Brutus and young Cato and a few others come back and they're like, yeah, we just left Titinius here and like, oh my goodness, now, wait, now everybody's dead? And Brutus makes a comment about the, like the ghost of Caesar getting his justice slowly, slowly, because it's, it's true, the conspirators are slowly vanishing off the face of the earth. Uh, Cicero was killed by Antony and Octavius' army. Cassius has been killed, Titinius has been killed. Um, who knows who else was killed when, um, when Mark Antony's army was overtaking Brutus's army and, and all that sort of thing. So it's, things are looking dire for the conspirators, which they were conspirators. Maybe that's what's supposed to happen to conspirators. You think? Maybe this is that great big point of Julius Caesar that so many people miss when, for example, a large New York company does the production outside and some people who like to wear red hats show up to that production and start protesting in the middle without watching to the end and seeing what happens to people who go and overthrow a government. Anyway, finishing out the play that we are in, um, Brutus sees these two bodies on the ground and makes a comment about Caesar's ghost coming back to claim his revenge. And then he says, are yet two Romans living such as these? The last of all the Romans, fare thee well. It is impossible that ever Rome should breed thy fellow. Friends, I owe more tears to this dead man than you shall see me pay. I shall find time, Cassius. I shall find time. Come, therefore, and to Tharsius send his body. His funeral shall not be in our camp, lest it discomfort us. Lucilius, come, and come, young Cato, let us to the field. Labio and Flavio, set our battles on. Tis three o'clock, and Romans, yet ere night we shall try fortune in a second fight. So Cassius and Brutus, who had this parting where they were like, this might be the last time that we ever get to talk to each other, so fare you well, my friend, and if we ever get captured, we'll probably kill ourselves. Brutus' opportunity to say goodbye to his friend is so short, and he just says that he owes this man a lot, and then says, I'll come back to you in a little while. I'll come back to it and, and pay you proper respect. In the meantime, let's go finish off this war. And that's how Act 5, Scene 3 ends, is them going off to continue fighting the war. Brutus now kind of, sort of, in a weird way, on his own, um, facing up against Mark Antony and Octavius Caesar. And sort of on that, on that theme of him being on his own, just one more little thought. One really interesting thing about Julius Caesar is you spend the first half of the play with a certain set of characters. And then in the second half of the play, there's only a couple characters that transfer over and then it's like a whole new group. For example, Pindarus doesn't exist in the first half of the show. Titinius doesn't really exist in the first half of the show. Trebonius doesn't exist in the second half of the show. And all of these other conspirators keep getting picked off and Portia dies and Cicero dies and all that sort of thing. So it's, you get, you get sort of a sense um, especially in Brutus, like all of his, all of his friends, all of his conspirators, he's still surrounded by people, obviously. He names Lucilius and Cato and Labio and Flavio all just in this 
one tiny little speech. So he's still surrounded by people, but we as audience don't know them. So we don't know what the relationship is, and it makes Brutus seem perhaps more isolated than he actually is. So I, just an interesting thing to point out about Julius Caesar, you spend the first half of the play with a certain group of people, and then the second half of the play with a different group of people. And it's just, it's an interesting choice, I think, to not have the same characters exist in the two different sides. It says some interesting things. Anyway, that's a discussion topic for your school group, because I know there's a whole bunch of school groups watching this, and you and all of my educator friends are pushing the subscribe button and telling all of your other friends. Um, all of these Julius Caesar videos will be put into the playlist. The playlist has been started. Obviously, it's not quite done yet, because we still have one more monologue tomorrow. But yeah, subscribe, come back, watch the playlist, discuss things with each other and with me. Leave notes in the in the comments if you have questions or thoughts or, or things you want to chat about. Um, yeah, anyway, tomorrow's the last day of Julius Caesar and I will see you then for that. Mwah.